Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to start working on transformations, some way of taking all the geometry and transforming it, so translating, rotating, or scaling in any possible way we can imagine. So first off, we're going to do translation, and we're going to start by just creating our transform class. So transform. And this class is eventually going to handle all our transformation operations. So first off, we're doing translation first, so I'm going to create a private vector3. Vector3, come on, there we go, called translation. And this is going to represent our x, y, and z position of our translation. So now I'm going to create public transform, the constructor. And I'm just going to initialize translation to a new vector 3f with just 0, 0, 0. So it doesn't change anything. And that's really the basis of the transformation class. Next up, I suppose, is getters and setters. So I'm going to go ahead and generate that. And, yeah, at the very end. And I'm actually going to change this up a bit. I'm going to have one more setter, just for convenience. It's going to take in float x, float y, and float z. So just in case I don't want to create a vector, this will just do it for me. And there. So now you might be wondering, what's the point of wrapping all this data in this new class? Well... When I actually want to represent the transformation, what I want to do is I want to put all the transformation in just one single piece of data. It's so one single data that I can just multiply my, my entire vertex by, and that will just instantly put it precisely where I want it to be, with fully ro translated, rotated, and scaled. And you might be wondering, well, how can I get one ultimate piece of data that can do that? And the answer is matrices. So, I'm going to create a method. It's going to be a public matrix4f called get translation. Oh, no, get transformation. And what this is going to do is going to convert our vector 3f's, our translation, rotation, and scale, and it's going to convert them all into matrices. And then, in order to get the final transformation matrix, the final matrix that will ultimately perform this scale, rotation, and translation all in one multiply operation, is I'm going to multiply the translation, rotation, and scale matrices together. So first off, I need to tr create this translation matrix, some matrix that, when I multiply my vertex position by it, it will move it into to whatever position I specify. So I'm going to create some matrix 4f called translation. And of course I'm going to initialize it to a new matrix 4f. And eventually, right now I'm just going to return translation when I'm done, because I don't have anything else to multiply it by. But, yeah. So in order to actually initialize this matrix, I'm going to create a new method in my matrix 4f class. And in order to create this transformation matrix, I'm just going to create a convenience method that, well, called init translation. And it's going to take in some float x, float y, and float z. And see, that's why I laid out the identity matrix like this, because now it's going to be much easier to set this up. So, I've been thinking a little, and here's sort of an intuitive way to think about the matrix. So you can figure out where we can put our x, y, and z so that it'll actually apply translation. If, you want to, if you're multiplying a matrix times a vector, you can th think of the final vector result, well, ultimately, like this. I have this, this one represents how much of the x component I want, plus how much of the y component I want, plus how much of the z component I want, plus how much of the w component I want. And the first row always represents the x component. The next row is the final y component. So for the final y component, that's how much of the original x component I want, plus how much of the original y component I want, plus how much of the original z component I want, plus how much of the original w component I want. 
You see what I'm, how I'm going for here? So yeah. And that's how I'm going to sort of figure out where to place these X, Y, and Z components so that they will actually apply a translation. So first off, I de do want the original X, Y, and Z component. So, so at least for the X one, I want the original X component because, you know, otherwise that wouldn't make sense. Otherwise I'm just setting its position, and that sort of defeats the point. Now this represents how much I want the Y component to affect it. I don't want the Y component to affect it, so that has to still be zero. This represents how much of the Z component I want to affect it. I don't want the Z component to affect it, so that should still be zero. So that only leaves the W component. Now, this is why, well, it's one of the reasons why in our face shader, actually I'll just go ahead and bring that up really quick. In our shader, I'm setting our fourth position to one. Because if that's one, then I can do something like this. I can say, hey, I want our to add x. If our w component is 1, then essentially that's just 1 times x. So I'm adding 1 times x. If I'm adding 1 times x, what's the end result of that? x. So that's where the x component goes. And, that, and of course, since this is the row for the x, that's going to add it to the x component. Now for the y component, I don't want the x component to affect it. I want whatever y is already there. I don't want the z. And that just leaves the w again. So for the w component, I'm going to add 1 times the y component. Because the w component is still 1. And I'm going to do the same thing here. So this matrice is going to give me a translation. It's going to translate it by however much I put in. And hopefully you get a little bit of an idea of why that works. So yeah. Now, oh, yeah, never mind, I thought I had messed up. So now I'm just going to initialize the translation to translation.getx, translation.gety, and translation.getz. And it's not working. Why is this not working? Undefined for trans... Oh! Right, because I named these the same thing, and that's probably causing issues. Okay. Translation... Call translation matrix, then. Return translation matrix. There. Now, I should have a matrix, which, when I multiply my final vector position by, it should move it by however much I specify. So... Now it's time to actually use this matrix transformation we created. I'm going to change up our vertex shader a little bit to actually do something useful. First off, I'm going to get rid of this uniform float, because, you know, that was fun and all, but I don't really need it anymore. I am going to create a uniform matrix 4, or uniform mat 4, and I'm going to call this transform. This is going to be our finalized transformation matrix, which has all our translation and rotation and scale. Just translation for now, but it should still work. And to get my final position, the idea is I can multiply the transformation matrix by my vector 4 position. So, really, that's all there is to the shader end of it. So now, I can just add the transform to this. So transform the uniform, and here in update, oh, I actually should be a little more careful with this, because technically uniform things don't actually affect it, like affect the shader until you bind it, so I should actually be doing something like this. I should be creating like some float variable called, I don't know, just just temp amount which equals 0, 0.0f and assigning temp amount to this big calculation which I'm actually just going to change to math.sign of temp for now and then assigning the uniform right here but hey so anyways let's use our transformation class so Let's create private transform, call it transform, 
and here I'm gonna say transform is a new transform and I'm going to set well y yeah anyways now that I have this I don't actually need that but you know just to give you an idea here I'm gonna set transform dot tran dot set set translation to some amount on X, some amount on Y, and some amount on Z. I'm going to set the X amount to math.sign of temp. So it should be moving back and forth. And I'm not going to move it R on the Y or Z axis. So now, in here, I sh after I have the shader.bot, I should be able to do shader.setuniform the transform to the ultimate transform matrix. So transform dot get translation matrix or get transformation. So that should pass in that as a uniform and if I run, what happens? As you can see, it's moving back and forth. So our whole translation matrix is indeed working. So, there you go. We have, even though I'm not using it, we have 3D translation. We can move this triangle anywhere we want in 3D space. So yeah, thank you, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and see you next time, where we will be tackling scaling, so we can make it any size we want in 3D space. Thank you, see you then.